I only really make videos like this when um, I can't have the patience to be trolling on YouTube and saving the world. You know, my YouTube comments saved Iran and saved many other places and helped other people bring a lot of understanding things. Um, so, yeah, Israel. Yeah, the big new one. No one cares about Ukraine anymore, do they? No, there's all the attention now is on Israel and Gaza. Um, so, attacks happened on Israel, it seems, by surprise from like the north. And by the waters and had nothing probably to do with even gaza the gaza strip at all and they even said um idf and whatever we've had our 9 11 now which is funny that they said that because everybody thought 9 11 was a self-inflicted conspiracy and that they used as a justification to start war against the middle east or in the middle east or against you know iran sorry anyway um sorry what is this oh, sorry, my sorry uh and they just said it that way very blatantly with all the generals were kind of they didn't seem too worried they were kind of smiling i heard there were celebrations in the white house um after this went down as if it all went according to plan um so we've had our own 9 11 and um now we feel we have the right to uh, attack gaza uh where it could have been anyone and anything from all the middle east attacking israel wearing hamas um simple things and stuff it could have been israel attacking themselves just like america attacked themselves there's such a thing in the Juda judaic world of trimming back the olive branch when jews kill other jews they become more wealthy as the last remaining royal israeli uh, it's it's all gone to be honest but they still believe in this and do this regularly so like oh a music festival of loads, loads of young and intelligent wealthy jews got murdered and, you know, they blame Hitler for this kind of crack, but the Jews were doing it kind of first, like, oh, we'll wipe out all your young, intelligent kids, and then our kids will prosper, and we'll set you back a generation or two. And that's why Hitler was all about that, because, like, they're doing that to us, we have to do something like that to them. I'm not, I don't like it. I don't even believe there was a third Reich. Anyway, um, I'm going to go with this. <laughs> You're off funding Zelensky. It's hilarious. You call me the Nazi. Um, yeah, so... Um, I saw that a migrant camp, God knows who these people are, a migrant camp in Gaza was like attacked or evacuated. And this is completely unrelated. It's like, just like 9-11, it's like, they're using an excuse that, oh, we got attacked, and now we're going to use it as an excuse to do loads of other stuff on our wish list. Like, oh, let's get rid of that migrant camp in Gaza. I was like, they have nothing to do with it. And then, like, on oh, Benjamin was like, oh, they're all the same. They're all in on it. Which is like what British royalty used to say about the Irish when they went around persecuting innocent citizens for nothing. And like, and then everybody hated the rebels in Ireland because they're getting so many civilians in trouble. And there's always that controversy that occurs then. And it's like, you've brought terrible things upon innocent, hardworking people. And it's, it's like Israel are the ones bringing this terror on innocent, hardworking people. They're, they're just attacking, and they're like, oh, they say, like, well, they're all the same. They're all in on it together. These migrants have nothing. Like, that's where they're in a migrant camp. You know, they have absolutely nothing. Like, they don't have state-of-the-art military tanks um, and weapons. These people have absolutely nothing, and you're persecuting and punishing them for some very high-sophisticated military operation that occurred north, um, in the northern country. It happened even, there was an attack in Lebanon, an attack something in Lebanon as well. Like, you can't just use that as an excuse, like 9-11 as an excuse to go do whatever you want, <laughs> Israel, you know, or State of Israel. Hi, I'm Jacob. I actually am Israel. Um, it's my friends and family. I actually own I own Israel. I'm pretty sure it's like my land for my children, actually. It's supposed to be a land for my children. So I can tell you it's all to leave. No, you're not settle settlers. Like, everybody out, everybody out. No, I'm having some friends over. I guess get, get you all out. You know, I'll go back in this night. No, don't worry. Every any friend of Joe's Joe is a friend of me, my me, my friend. Um, they're all meant to be my friends. I probably would have liked the you know the Benjamites or the you know the Simeonites or the you know Reubenites or whatever the fuck they are. All contesting to be my um friend, but uh yeah that's I just kind of I just explode you know it's not to do with hypocrisy. I know there's a lot of, probably a lot of hypocrisy going on, but I just explode um. You can't just do what, use this as, and call it 9-11. If you call it 9-11, I think it's even funnier because you're just using it just like 9-11 was an excuse to go do whatever you want to do. Um, and it's not an excuse. You, it is, that's crazy. Migrant camp. They have nothing. Like, you know, they have nothing. <laughs> and you use this to attack 
people that have absolutely fucking nothing. Like, you know, I was like, they might throw stones because they have nothing. And I wouldn't blame them, to be honest. I do. I know that I throw stones. No, I spray painted. Yeah, I was teaching. In English, you know, of course, spray painting in English because, you know, they need the education. Um, definitely. I can't believe it. Uh, this is dirty. I don't know. Israel. I think you've got too much Hebrew on the walls and too Hebrew on the things. I, I'd hate seeing it. It always looks filthy, dirty to me when I see Hebrew anywhere printed on plastic, plastic body bags, Hebrew printed. I was like, oh, that's awful. Fuck. It makes me feel like a butcher's or something sick in my stomach. I don't know. And I love Hebrew, you know, but, uh, you know, I don't think it's supposed to be on the walls. Um... Oh yeah, um, how was I going with this? I was exploding with anger. Not anger, but, um, you know, uh, it's just like America, kind of loads. It's like Taiwan, Ukraine, anywhere, Sudan probably, or somewhere else. And it's just now, uh, like, this, this is American, doing a, what America love best. You know, absolutely, they sent a war machine uh, tanker, some death tanker in there. It's just doing what they do best, man, you know, <laughs> divide and conquer, and, yes. And the irony is, you know, the American flag is protect Israel. That's what the American flag means, protect Israel and you'll prosper. And America think they'll protect Israel, or prosper by protecting the state of Israel. When you got Vanderbergs and New York City and Rockefellers buggering the crap out of me and my family all day, every single day, and like, no, you shall not prosper now. <laughs> Nothing to do with the state of Israel, although the state of Israel, you know, state. Actually, no, Jerusalem's in Israel. Jerusalem looks beautiful. And um, where am I getting on to? Um, the Jews can wander in Sinai again. Uh, not the Jews. Um, oh, I might have a lot more to say about this. I don't know. I can't remember as well. I have, half my head is actually burning from hexes at the moment. I'm just really used to it. I can tolerate the uh, strife and pain. Um, what are they doing? Yeah, so as uh, the Jews may have brought this attack on themselves and um, viciously killed wealthy other wealthy Jews, which doesn't surprise me, and cut off their heads in their black uniforms and uh, smiled about it on TV a bit. And they didn't ex uh, appear to uh, phase. I'd be terrified if this was happening, you know. It seems like they're very powerful and they're storming and they're challenging, but they all seem to be smiling in the IDF. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if they attacked himself, trimming back the olive branch. And then just used it as an excuse to go do more stuff and more stuff again. Um, yeah, uh, just, just more frustration I had. I can't remember what I had. Um, there was another video I saw there. I think it's hilarious the way he's all take sides, like global politicians, even Putin. is like Putin fully supporting an independent sovereign state of uh, Palestine. I just thought it was so weird. It's like... I'd fire all the men, and this is a bit hippie, and I just fire all the men and hire like lesbian care workers, kids, you know what I mean? Oh, I just want everybody to be friendly and peaceful. You know the people you don't let talk in parliament? Because like, oh, we just want, I just put them in charge, you know, and then they'll be like in lesbian book clubs, hanging out and meeting up on regular events and sorting out global uh, issues instead of all the men like fighting and conquering and taking sides. I just sack them all. It's like, you're supposed to be a politician and you're supposed to get on with everybody. Other politicians, we pay you to get on with each other. And if you're not getting on with each other, I'm going to sack you. It's like, oh, I've got a problem now with this lad over here. It's like, oh, you're sacked. You've got a problem. I mean, is it getting in the way of your work? Is it getting in the way of your obligations to your people? Is your, yeah, you know, your dogmatic ideals getting in the way of your, yeah, like dogmatic ideals. Like Gaza, they just want to Gaza. They just want it. You know, it's just so much pressure around it. And they're like, oh, this is where Moses came through. And then they're like, yeah, well, then we all have a right because Moses came through here and delivered us all. And we all have a right to, I want to go through Gaza. I think it'd be awesome. He probably definitely came up through there. Or they did anyway. I think Moses on a mountain saying, you just go over there now and forget about me. No, not really. Go over there and forget about me. I'm going to go off to Club 61 out on the highway, whatever it is. But, um, yeah, I'd love to do that. I'd love to walk from Egypt to... Uh, Gaza. That'd be pretty awesome. Hit some stones and see what happens with a stick. You know? Come on, come on. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Uh, uh, no, I'm a Levite, actually. Sorry. <laughs> Someone saying something about me. Yeah, no, I'm just connected to the Levites. 
John the Baptist. Uh, Moses, I, I, for some reason I had uh, somewhere that Moses was Levi, but he preceded Levi <laughs> a long time. Um, yeah, yeah, John the Baptist was a Levite. Bearing the crooks. He wasn't supposed to be bearing the crooks. Judah was supposed to be bearing the crooks. I don't want to get onto the breaking balls of the Jewish community now. Judah was the oldest brother. And because he thought he was the oldest, like, oh, I'll be in charge of all the finances and royalty. And Judah, but then as we learned down through the ages, it's like, oh, no, the oldest brother is supposed to be priestly and celibate and have no money. It's like, oh, that's been the problem with the Jews for so long. They put the oldest brother in charge. And it wasn't the oldest brother. Uh, it was just the most loved brother, probably. Joseph was the most loved. Apple of my eye never left my side. Uh, yeah, so the Levites suffered and burned, whereas Levi was probably supposed to be very wealthy, but a wealthy man. Yeah. Um, and who saved the Levites? Oh yeah, Jesus. Joseph, yeah. yeah. It was a really funny video. South Park made it. Who can bring the Jewish community and uh, the Islamic community and the Christian community together? I was like, Van Halen. <clears throat> uh, no, I can. I guess where I can do that. But um, I'm not even a Van Halen fan. No. I'm getting up topic here. But I just think he's a great music drummer, piano player, he's a scientist, many great things. But he was a guitarist that's why he's so unique as a guitarist because i don't think he really i don't think he was a guitarist at all it's weird man eight tonal squabbly stuff and... wow. anyway what am i saying about oh yeah the van halen concert uh uh, uh so what am i saying ceasefire because you don't know what's happening and says he choose outside the idf will use um you know uh, panic and escalation as a reason to get lots of things done quickly because, you know, when it's a big hurry on, so as uh, was the UN or something like that, it'd be like, you know, ceasefire, calm down, we want to know exactly what happens. Because it does just, like, happen to, but that's why World War One and Two started, because it was all on Morse code. And things just escalated too fast for people to sit around and tap out the Morse code. It's like, oh, fuck, I just bombed them. <laughs> I get the message. I'll send it in Morse code. Bang, 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 bang. <laughs> you know, yeah, global communication does the reason why these are all a farce and mockery. Because he didn't really have global communication back then, it would really was all like uh, Morse code. And I was like, fuck the Morse code, I'm gonna bomb them. But you actually do have global communication, and like war is so hilarious now because of it. It's just so weird, and it's too easy, I'd probably imagine. And they're all in bunkers just sending out drones to attack one another. And it's like, why not you just make some crappy online game called Drone Wars? And you sit around building up your bunker and sophisticating your drones and sending your drones out to bomb each other. And you'd save a lot of lives, you know. A lot of Ukrainian criminals are sent to the front lines and uh, heard gangs that would stay behind. <laughs> I'm a man, I'm willing to stay behind and fight. Great, we really want to see that attitude. You're willing to stay behind and dogmatically fight. Wonderful, you stay. You're not, okay, we'll send you away. Okay, we'll send you away. Okay, we'll send you away. You're the future of Ukraine. You're willing to dogmatically fight over symbols and ideals? Great, yeah, front line with you. Boom, 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 boom. It's got social cleansing. <laughs> war. The most sufficient war is when both sides equally and sufficiently kill one another. And there might be one guy left, and you put a little medal, a ceremony on, you give him a medal, and when he's off stage, poof, you shoot him too. Boom, that's war. It's, it's a good war. You know, it's a good war, you know, it's an effective war. Anyway, what I'm saying, um, yeah, don't send your kids to uh, a, a mystery music festival organized by Hezbollah, you know what I mean? That's all I have to say. I want to go to music festivals. Hezbollah don't like music. Well, Sam 150, but um, when we get there. But um, don't send your kids to uh, yeah, a Hezbollah music festival. Yeah, that's probably really good advice. Or maybe the IDF set it up. I don't know. But anyway, nobody seems to care, which I think is hilarious. <laughs> okay, um, stop killing each other. Yeah, from Jacob. No, Daddy said, stop killing each other. Yeah. Actually, I don't care. Doing keep going. Actually, yeah, equally insufficiently kill each other, I guess. Yes, that's, that's good. And I'll hang out with James and John, you know, you're nice kids when you're all gone. 